Peut-être euh, revenir au, au, au début de, de Morwina, quelle était un petit peu l'idée de départ et votre intention avec ce livre ah. Ok, I wrote, uh, I wrote an essay which is still on my life journal, um, which is called uh, The Industrial Landscape of Elfland. And uh, I wrote this because people have this, particularly Americans, have this kind of strange imagination of Wales as a magical place. And where I grew up, it's really not very magical. It is a post-industrial landscape. But yet, at the same time, it is magical because everywhere is magical. And you can see the magic in, in any kind of landscape. But it's a post-industrial magic and not this kind of Celtic, fakey thing. You, you must get this here, actually, in, in Brittany, because you have standing stones, and therefore you've got a kind of, kind of magic in a landscape. Whereas you've also got factories where people make things. And it's, it's modern as well as being ancient at the same time, and in a way that a lot of people in North America don't understand very well. So I would get preconceptions about being Welsh uh, in Canada and particularly in the US. And so I, I wanted to write about the part of Wales that I came from and what it was really like. And I suddenly got this idea for writing this, this essay about this um, and saying that I, I imagined it as a fantasy landscape, but actually it was a landscape of the chrysalids. Uh, it's a, it's a, a post-apocalyptic landscape. So I wrote this piece, which is, which is a pretty good essay. And hundreds of people, I mean, like literally 70 people, commented on it and said, you should make this into a book. And I thought, oh, you are so silly. How could I make this into a book? This is just an essay about where I come from and the context of, of my life. And there's no story there. There's just a description of, of landscape and, and uh, preconceptions and misconceptions of landscape. And then um, Michelle Segarra, Michelle Segarra West, who is a Canadian fantasy writer, said, you should make this into a book. And I thought, oh, Michelle, you should know better than this. You write books yourself. You know what you need to write a book. And then I was making dinner, and I'd just seen this comment. And I thought, oh, how could she possibly think I could make this into a book? What kind of book could I possibly make it into? And then I thought, well, I guess I could. And the story that would be there would be an autobiographical story or a semi-autobiographical story um, about, about fairies and about growing up in, inside books and how books help you to grow up in a way that is not an escapist way. The book has been described as a, a female intellectual coming of age, which is an unusual thing because usually you get intellectual coming of age for men and women only get to have emotional coming-of-age stories. And I think that is one of the reasons why this book has been popular and successful and that people like it, because that is an unusual thing. But I thought, well, that would be an interesting thing to do, and that would be weird. But are you allowed to do that? Are you allowed to talk about real books in fiction? Can you, can you do that? And I thought, okay, this would be a way I could use a particular magic system which I have thought of, in which everything in the world is connected together and everything is, is connected to, to landscape. And I thought, I'm so sick of Celtic stuff. Uh, I'm going to do this where I'm not using Celtic stuff, but I'm writing in the Welsh landscape. And I'm tired of people doing true names for magic and names being everything. I'm going to do this where the magic doesn't even have nouns, which was a big challenge, actually. You know, the, the fairies don't have names and they don't use nouns. And you try to write a dialogue where you have no nouns. It must have been terrible for the poor translator, because it's been even worse in French. I feel so sorry for all my translators having to, to deal with this. It was, it was difficult enough writing it in the first place. So, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's what, I, what I did. And uh, I actually wrote it quite quickly once I started to, to write it. And my editor, Patrick Nielsen Hayden, was very, very enthusiastic. I was sending it to him as I was writing it, and he was very enthusiastic about it, which was great because I had been thinking maybe this is too weird. But quite often when I write a book, I think maybe it's too weird. Oh, well, if the worst comes to the worst and nobody wants it, I can always put it online. That'll be okay. So, it, 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 
I was not expecting it to be a book that so many people would, would fall in love with. I thought the people would read it and they would think, well, she's a very weird character, that's kind of interesting. And they'd read it the way the people read Elizabeth Moon's Speed of Dark, where there's an autistic character, an autistic point of view character. And I thought people would read it like that. Whereas, in fact, an awful lot of people have read it and they identify with, with Maury, they, they feel close to her, they see something of their own experience. So that was quite interesting for me to realise in my late 40s that I'm not actually as weird as I thought I was, <laughs> you know, that, that I'm more normal, that my, my experience is more mirrored in, in many Spanish people's experience, many, the experience of many readers. Comment est-ce que vous, vous dites que les lecteurs s'identifient à Marwina Comment est-ce que vous, vous la voyez, votre héroïne Elle est comment pour vous I'm sorry. Comme, comment est-ce que vous présenteriez votre héroïne Comment est-ce que vous la voyez, Marwina Ok. Well, she's 15, and she is half of a pair of twins, and her sister is, is dead. And most of her life is inside books. And one of the things that, that I always say about her is that she's a science fiction reader with fantasy problems. So she lives in a world with magic and fairies. It's our world, but it has magic and fairies, and the magic is, is very complicated. And science fiction is the answer to a lot of her problems. Her, her reading and the way that she approaches reading helps her understand the world, not just the fantasy problems, but the real world problems that, that she has, her human interactions. So she's a, she's a science fiction reader in a, in a world with, with fantasy problems, where the, where the fantasy is the problem and the, the science fiction is the, is the answer. So that's, uh, that's how I think of that. de casque, donc vous avez compris, avec un, un chapeau. Euh, il y a beaucoup, beaucoup de références d'ouvrages de, de, euh, dont, dont vous parlez dedans. Alors, est-ce que c'était un plaisir de citer tous ces auteurs et, et tous ces ouvrages Est-ce que c'est aussi un, un roman sur la connivence avec euh, tous les lecteurs de, de science-fiction et de fantasy And I just wanted, the, the books needed to be in there. If I was going to represent my experience as a teenager, if I was going to represent her experience, then the books needed to be there. And they needed to be real books, because who could make that up? I mean, <laughs> you couldn't make up the whole of a, maybe Samuel Delaney could make up the whole of the culture and the whole of the literature, but it would be beyond me. 